Joining me now is John Paul MacIsaac. He is the actual founder and the owner of the shop, the original shop where the Hunter Biden laptop was dropped off by Hunter Biden with a receipt signed by Hunter Biden with his phone number next to it. John Paul, appreciate you joining us tonight. Thanks for having me on the show. All right, so let's break this down. Guy walks into your, you're, you're actually, uh, as I understand it, legally blind from some distance and, and, and can't you know, readily available, uh, readily uh, identify people uh, very easily. Now, he came in, drops off this laptop, says fix it, never comes back to get it, and all of a sudden you start going through your receipts and you find out, hey, this is Hunter Biden with his signature, with his phone number. I better alert somebody. Tell me how this broke out from your shop and was turned over to whoever and how these files actually got out. Well, so when I when it became my property about mid July of 2019, because he abandoned the laptop in my possession, he came back in twice, or he came back in the, uh, after the first time to drop off a hard drive. So he was answering his phone, he was getting his messages. He just stopped coming in, and he never paid for it. And after 90 days, that I explained to him on the paperwork that he signed, uh, it became my property, and I had seen some things on that laptop which made me very concerned for my safety, but also for national security. So I felt like it was time for the FBI to take this. And uh, unfortunately they didn't. And then I tried several members of Congress to get their attention and alert them. And I, it fell on deaf ears. So eventually I gave it a copy to uh, a lawyer representing uh, Rudy Giuliani, who was representing the president of the United States. Cause I tried the department of justice and they didn't act on it. And then I tried a, uh, Congress, they didn't act on it. And so I figured the executive branch was the best way to go. And uh, that was the end of my involvement at that point. Uh, Bob Costello and Rudy Giuliani's team decided that uh, the New York Post was the best course of action. I requested that my information be kept private. Unfortunately, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, nobody's fault, really, but yeah. it just it got out and people made the connection rather quickly. And next thing I know, I'm getting death threats. I have to have a police presence at my shop at all time. And and it got so bad that I, I had to flee the state and close my business. Wow. I mean, that's remarkable to me that this is what you had to go through. And it, what's more remarkable is that like, hey guys, hello, I have a, a high crime to, uh, to, to send to you that could potentially compromise the net, which now is the next president of the United States. And nobody took your call, nobody listened to you. So, you know, as you're seeing this stuff roll out now, is there more stuff on here that we haven't seen yet as a public to your knowledge? You know, I, there's stuff, stuff that I saw that personally affected me as far as my safety um, that I haven't seen released yet. And I prefer if it didn't because, uh, you know, I just don't don't need to have that information out there. It's it's. Uh, yeah, um, the media has been pretty good about covering a lot of this stuff, or at least some members of the media. Uh, it's only been what recently mm -hmm. that not New York Post or Washington Post and the New York Times have acknowledged even CNN had a little blurb about how the laptop was real. Uh, I, I don't think mm -hmm. it's enough. I think that uh, they're not covering the content that's coming off the laptop. They're acknowledging it's real. It almost feels like they're covering their bum. They're not uh, prepared to admit and cover this as real news, uh, but they just want to put enough out there so that if it comes back to them that they can say, oh, no, we, we said it was real. So I, I just I don't think it's right, enough right. for justice, at least. Yeah, that's the, the that's the unfortunate part. Is, is that, like, look, I don't I don't want this to come out because I want it to make Hunter Biden Biden look bad. I want it to come out because I want to know what we're dealing with and how compromised, if at all, which I believe, uh, Joe Biden actually might be with ten percent for the big guy. Um, you said that you were, uh, you know, a little bit concerned for your safety. Do do you want to mention any of those things, or would you rather keep that private? No, you know, it was never my responsibility to share the actual contents of the laptop with anybody other than the mm -hmm. authorities and, and people of authority. Uh, and I still feel that way. There's, again, there's a lot of people out there that have done incredible journalism on the subject. Uh, Miranda Devine's book is a, a, a tell-all for, for a lot of the contents. Uh, we've seen also a lot of contents out that haven't been from the laptop that have been reported to be from the laptop. And we have to be careful about what's real and what's fake because the last thing I want is right, right laptop to be discredited and never used as evidence because then everything I fought for yeah, and lost would be wasted. 
Right. Now, it is, it is shocking to me that as, as little people listen to you early on in the situation, what's even more shocking is that you're saying there's stuff on there that hasn't come out yet, and I'm not sure, you, you, know, you, you even say it should, might not even come out at all if, if you had your way, but it's, it's scary to think that this is the level of security the son of the President of the United States, a senator for four decades in D.C., had on his laptop. Shocking me. John Paul, Mac Isaac, I appreciate you being here. I'm sorry that you have to go through all this stuff. Well, thanks for having me on the show and let me tell my story.